Now let's explore integrating Squirrel Mail with Dovecot as well as Postfix and Apache. So let's create a section, Squirrel Mail, which is basically a webmail application written in PHP. Integration with Apache, Postfix, and Dovecot. So as mentioned, Squirrel Mail is a webmail application, similar to Hotmail, Gmail, Yahoo Mail, or any other web application mailer like Outlook Web Access. Although not as fully featured as Outlook Web Access, Squirrel Mail provides connectivity to your IMAP-based server, and it will serve your mail to the inbox, as well as is modular, so it allows plugins to route messages based on rules, spam plugins, and allows you to do all sorts of neat things via those plugins. So we like to cover Squirrel Mail. It is the most popular webmail application available for PHP-based systems, Windows, or Linux. So it's implemented with PHP. Now our task includes, primary task, is to install Squirrel Mail with support via Apache. And to do so, we're going to set up an Apache virtual host. This gives us an opportunity to practice what we've studied earlier regarding virtual hosts. So there are many steps involved. We do need to download the latest version of Squirrel Mail. So let's open a new shell, Control T, and navigate to squirrelmail.org and find the latest version. And we'll navigate to the download link. The latest version happens to be either 1.4.12 or 1.4.13. We'll see momentarily it is 1.4.13. So this is the latest, and it's a rapidly moving project. And it is made available in the formats that we see here, zip, bz2, targz, and there are also translations that are made available using the locals files that you may download so that Squirrel Mail works in multiple languages. The smallest of the downloads tends to be the BZ2 format because it offers better compression. In addition, for this file there's an MD5 file as well as a GPG file, a signature file. We can confirm the signature if we've imported the public key that was used to sign this Squirrel Mail BZ2 file. Otherwise, we can check the MD5 sum. Let's download this particular item, the main package, for 1.4.13. It kicks us over to sourceforge.net with an immediate link to download it. We'll save it to disk. And we're going to install this on the remote system. So this claims to have downloaded it. It's probably on the desktop, as the pop-up indicated. And we should also get that MD5 file so that we can confirm the file that we've downloaded. So with that said, here's the MD5 sum. We'll paste this to the shell so we can see it. And let's just find a desktop for the Linux CBT user who we're currently logged in as. And there's the file. So here's the MD5 sum we copied from the site. By executing MD5 sum followed by the name of the file, Squirrel Mail, it should return the same string, beginning with 1A, terminating with 8AD. And indeed, it's the same string telling us that this file is intact and has not changed since we've downloaded it off the net. So with that f said, we should now trust, in addition to, of course, verifying the GPG signature optionally, we can now trust extracting the contents of Squirrel Mail Tar BZ2. But because we're going to install this on our remote server where we install Apache, let's SCP using the secure copy program the name of the file to the remote system, Linux CBT serve 4, into root's home directory on that remote system. Once name resolution takes place, we'll be prompted for a password, as you see, and then once we authenticate, the file will be copied. So with that said, let's navigate to a shell over on the remote system, and in root's home directory, we should see Squirrel Mail. There it is. We need to extract the contents of this package to a web accessible route. Before doing so, we can confirm the contents of the package using tar t jvf. 
scroll mail. This will display to the screen the contents of the file, of the BZ2 file, so that you know it's included to ensure that you've indeed downloaded the appropriate file. But the MD5 sum also ensured that we have the file as scroll mail has it on record, or the, the maintainers of the scroll mail package have it on record. So that said, let's update some more notes. So download from scrollmail.org. We downloaded the BZ2 file. Confirm the MD5 sum. Then copy the star BZ2 file to the Apache server. Additionally, we need to ensure that there's PHP support or mod PHP support on the Apache server. If we search on this particular repository for PHP, there are many such packages. But what we're interested in is the mod PHP package, which allows Apache to process PHP pages. And that package is provided by, or the mod module itself is provided by the PHP package. There are multiple such packages providing connectivity to other types of engines, such as IMAP and so on. But this PHP module provides the necessary connectivity for PHP to execute. We we'll also need PHP IMAP so that the scroll mail software can connect to the local instance of Dovecot. So with that said, let's go ahead and install the requisites using yumy install php. We'll also get php imap because again, scroll mail relies upon connectivity to the imap instance in order to talk to dovecot which provides access to the mailbox. This will get the imap package and let's just note in our documentation that we've installed both. So yum install PHP as well as PHP IMAP. And let's see how we're looking. This looks pretty good. An RPM query list, PHP IMAP reveals what's included. And here's the module, the IMAP.so module beneath user live. An RPM query list of the PHP package includes a link to the live PHP module beneath the HTTPD structure. Let's navigate into etc httpd lsltr of conf.d reveals a php.conf file which didn't exist prior to the installation of the PHP package. So less conf.d php.conf reveals the directives necessary to load PHP 5 support within Apache 2.2 running on Red Hat Enterprise 5. It adds a handler for the suffix .php, a type for .php, which is still text HTML, although it gets processed by the server. It appends to the already defined directory index variable, index.php, in the event that you have a default index.php page within your site. So now we have PHP support in place. This installs PHP support. So this installs PHP support for Apache slash IMAP. With that said, we can now set up a directory structure to park the mail files. So E will make directory var www mail. And then F will be to extract scroll mail to var www mail. Of course, you can place it wherever you'd like, but for our intents and purposes, this works. So let's make directory var www mail navigate into var www mail and then tar x jvf our home directory scroll mail into this directory structure which creates a top level structure called scroll mail and we will simulate this out to mail so it's easy to reference from the browser or we can park the files into this directory I like to place them in distinct directories beneath the web root so that we can alternate versions as we go from, let's say, 1.4.13 to 1.4.14. We can simply extract the new version into the current directory and change the symlink to mail. So we'll go ahead and create a symlink, ln, and it's going to be for scroll mail, a soft link. We'll call it mail. Now we have a symlink so that providing 
we've set up the right directory options for the new virtual hosts, we should be able to connect to the server and use forward slash mail, which will cause Apache to follow the sim link into the squirrel mail subdirectory. Let's just go ahead and note that. Optionally, create sim link named mail to point to squirrel mail version so that it's accessible once again the web server is reconfigured with the vhost. The next step is to create the Apache vhost. And we have examples earlier in our documentation. We can copy a predefined or already defined vhost and paste it below in our notes. We just need to find it somewhere in our history here. Here's an example of one that'll work. And it's using name base virtual hosts, which works just well for our intents and purposes. We'll paste it and then change the server name from site 3 to mail. We'll also change the document route from site 3 to mail and the directory to mail that we'd like to have the rules apply to. We'll also include an options follow sim links so that the mail sim link is followed and we'll update the custom and error logs to be mail. And this is our new virtual host container which will provide access to squirrel mail. And if we'd like we can also change the server admin to mail.linuxcbt.internal so that this user receives mail independently. And let's copy the block and paste it into the Apache config. Navigate all the way towards the bottom where the existing virtual host lives. And just be sure that there's a name virtual host in place and it is for the IP address that parses using HTTP 1.1 properly. Great, so this is what we wanted. We'll save the changes, and that's the virtual host block. So create the Apache virtual host, update configuration. So the next step is to restart Apache. Then after we've restarted Apache barring no errors, we'll then need to configure squirrel mail defaults. And then after we've configured the defaults, set up DNS, attempt to access. So with that said, let's restart Apache. And this looks good. HTTPD status will tell us the virtual hosts that are loaded. Site 3, 4, and mail are all loaded. That means we're looking good from Apache's perspective. Next step is to configure squirrel mail defaults. To do so, we'll navigate into var www mail, the squirrel mail directory, or into the mail sim link, either or. And in there, there's a conf config subdirectory which has the appropriate conf file that we'd like to execute. This conf.pl file, and perhaps we should just enumerate or lay out the full path which for our configuration is beneath var dub 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 mail simlink mail config and it's called conf.pl it's a Perl script which sets up some default variables for squirrel mail run it using dot forward slash conf.pl as within Linux items that are or execute items that are in your current directory will not be executed because the, def the current directory does not exist in your path. This brings up an interface allowing us to set some defaults. Organizational preferences. Organization name defaults to squirrel mail. We'll change it to Linux Genius. And everything else looks fine unless you have another graphic that you'd like to place and so on and so forth, but if you're happy with the settings, save the changes, return to the main menu. Server settings, the domain that will handle mail for and use to compose or append to outbound messages will be linuxcbt.internal. So modify the domain, 
and that changes the default outbound messages to Linux CBT internal. Remember, scroll mail doesn't receive mail. It's not an MTA. It simply reads mail and allows you to send mail using the assistance or using the IMAP as well as postfix facilities. It's merely a front end. For IMAP connectivity, you'll connect to localhost port 143. We'll save the changes and it will send mail using SMTP or the send mail utility, but because it's on a local host, SMTP will work with no trouble whatsoever. There are folder defaults that you can set for all your users. There are also general options like where to store the data and attachment, data meaning user settings and attachments. So you need to be sure that var local scroll mail data exists or change these paths so in a separate window we need to just double check that and that's var local and nothing exists beneath it so we'll make a directory squirrel mail followed by two directories using brace expansion data and attachments again let's just double check how it's indicated it's actually attach this will create those two directories. Now when we LSL, squirrel mail will see the two directories. We need to be sure that squirrel mail can write to the two directories. And it does so as the user in which Apache runs. So if we PSF EF grep HTTPD, we see Apache runs as Apache. So if we change mod using dash R recursively, Apache optionally as the group as well var local scroll mail and it doesn't take the dot and that's chown we have the wrong command here that's actually chown let's try it again and that's more like it now when we lsl var local we should see squirrel mail is owned by Apache and beneath squirrel mail Apache owns the attach and data directories so let's just configure squirrel mail defaults create attach and data directories for squirrel mail beneath var local squirrel mail and then L update perms or permissions so scroll mail may write to data and attach directories using chown recursive apache apache var local scroll mail and there are more restrictive permissions that you may apply. If you consult the Squirrel documentation, you'll see the exact permissions that are suggested. So, and they are more restrictive than what we're applying. But what we're applying works. And since the directory is outside of the web root, we're not worried about any potential exploits. So with that said, Squirrel Mail should be able to write to the appropriate data and attach directories. Back to our config for a second. We haven't made any changes in this screen, so we'll return to the main menu. And there are other options. If you want to turn on plugins, for example, navigate to 8, and you'll see a list of plugins, and you can turn them on. Now, the ones that are installed are listed beneath install. Currently, none are. And here's a list of what appears to be 18 plugins that you could turn on. For example, let's turn on the calendar plugin. And when you scroll up, you'll now see that it's installed. We'll save the changes. And once we've finished with the configuration, we'll save all together and then exit using Q to quit. So now the config file has been written. And as a consequence, it is suggested that we hit config test.php from the browser to just double check it. And we'll just hold that URL 
as one of our options, which would be HTTP mail internal source config test.php. So, barring no missing PHP modules or the inability or ignore the inability to connect to Dovecot, we should be able to log in using Squirrel Mail with IMAP connectivity from the browser. So now we're at the step where we can update DNS. Because as it stands, if we attempt to, from the local system, which is where we'll launch a browser session, dig mail.linuxcbt.internal, we see that it's already configured. So this tells us we have nothing to update. We've already placed a mail entry from our DNS studies. With that said, let's attempt to connect to the server. In this window here, free window, dot internal. And this connects us to the default page because there is no index.php beneath mail. However, if we use the symlink mail, it takes us to the squirrel mail page. So to update our URL, our test is performed by connecting to mail Linux CBT dot internal slash mail. Of course we could change a document root to the mail symlink and that would obviate the need to place mail in the URL, but this works for our intents and purposes. And as far as that config test is concerned, this would be internal mail source. Let's try it from the browser. And this checks out the configuration. It looks for any missing items. Tells you when it was configured. Tells you what you need to run if you want to change or make changes. And it's complaining that it cannot write data to var local squirrel mail data. That's something we need to look at. Let's take a look at that again. Let's check that path. That's var local squirrel mail. And this is on the wrong box. And perhaps it's trying to do so as the group. So let's change mod. 775 and we'll do it recursively and then we'll try refreshing this page to see what it thinks about being able to write to that directory now let's try refreshing again and let's see if it's been impacted we should see a full test and this looks more like it it's found dovecot no more errors regarding squirrel mail, inability to write to the data directory, and congratulations, the setup looks fine. So this should allow us to connect, proving it to be successful. But if you do encounter errors such as inability to connect to Dovecot or SMTP, take a look at your Varlog messages. It could be SE Linux related, and there'll be an accompanying SE alert, if necessary, command that you can execute to enable Apache to talk to, let's say, SMTP or IMAP. So let's try to connect to the server once more. This prompts us for authentication. Then we'll attempt to log in as a user Linux CBT into the user's mailbox. And there we see the messages that were sent earlier. We can compose a message send it to root testing below is the attachment area standard web base mail client and this will use SMTP to send the message to the local root user let's try to view that message from the shell as the user root Notice, it tells us, because of the mail check, which runs every 60 seconds, that we have new mail. And Mutt will confirm that message. We'll reply, and notice the user agent has been inserted.
payments will be sent momentarily out to the remote user or to the user who sent us a message. So with that said, we've set up Squirrel Mail. It's a standard interface. You can connect to it, and let's just refresh that session, and explore its features. It's really straightforward. If you've used one mail client, you've used them all. Here's a response, and it's very straightforward, easy to work with. It's merely a front end to your IMAP and Postfix or Send Mail applications. Again, all sorts of options are possible. Here's the calendar plugin that we enabled which shows us a standard calendar. You can manipulate your options and options such as personal information which will include your full name, signature, and other items whether or not a signature should be included. Display preferences, how you'd like to see your, your themes, your layout of Squirrel Mail, the colors that are used, as well as how many messages per page and various options. And as you add as the administrator different plugins to the Squirrel Mail environment, they'll be included as rectangular objects within the options area. You may search for messages, create new folders from the folders section, and download plugins from squirrelmail.org to allow you to fight spam, reroute messages based on rules, so on and so forth. When you sign out, it kills the PHP session and you're off. So that's how you set up Squirrel Mail not too many steps hopefully and this is the config test if there are any problems just pay attention to the output and consult varlog messages and you'll be able to have the server up and running for your user community relatively quickly but as this is the standard mail client available on the net and it's very easy to set up it just requires PHP with IMAP support and an Apache web server with the ability to write to specific directories. And if SE Linux is in play, perhaps we should just note that if SE Linux is enabled, use set SE bool with the appropriate options to allow HTTPD to connect to IMAP and Postfix or SMTP ports, in other words, network ports. And you can get more information from Varlog messages. In the event that SE Linux is enabled and is protecting or preventing your instance of Apache from connecting to the network ports for HTTPD or for IMAP as well as SMTP from HTTPD. So that's a little bit about setting up Squirrel Mail within Red Hat Enterprise Linux.